So here is a very simple problem around strings, right? So the problem here is as follows. Given a string like this, okay, it's called reversing the words in a given string. Remember, it is not reversing a string. That's a much simpler problem. This is slightly trickier than simply reversing a string, right? So imagine if I'm given a string like this. I love algorithms, right? I want to reverse in such a way that this, I want to reverse the words in the string. So I want the last word to become the first word. I want the last but one to become the second from the first and I want this to become last. Look at this. I'm not reversing the whole string. I'm not, my resultant string is not S, M, H, T, I, R, so on and so forth. It's not that. I want to reverse the individual words in a given string. Slightly more tricky. Again, you, whichever programming language you're using. Again, the solution to this depends a lot on the programming lang language constructs you have. If you, I, of course, it is toughest to write it in C or C++. If you're writing it in Java or Python or any other uh, any other more modern language which has explicitly string manipulation libraries, it's much much easier. If you have if you're using uh, if you're using Java or Python because they have string manipulation libraries, there are simple straightforward functions to given a string to cut it into individual words. It's much more easy in Java and Python, right? It's slightly harder in C and C plus plus because you have to because in C and C plus plus these strings are, are are thought of as simply your character arrays, right? So I'll show you a solution in C, C, C and C++. But if you're solving this using Java and Python, it should be much, much easier than C, C++. Okay. So this is very program specific, very programming language specific solution that I'm giving. But the general idea you can easily implement in Java or Python if you know the, the string libraries for or the string functions for Java and Python, right? So now again, before we go there, Please pause this video and try it, whichever programming language you are choosing. And if you are choosing C, C++, be very, very careful with the pointer logic. It's, it's doable. It's not rocket science. The solution is fairly simple. If the length of the string is n, if the length of the string is n, we can easily construct an order of n algorithm. Okay, I'll be also discussing just an order of n time algorithm itself. Right, it's fairly simple. It's not rocket science. Okay, you just have to be careful with the string, uh, if you're writing code in C or C++, you have to be careful with the pointer arithmetic and the pointer manipulations. That's all there is. If you're writing in Java and Python, you just have to know the correct functions or the uh, correct classes and functions that you have to use from the string libraries. That's all there is. Okay. So please try it before you check out the rest of the solution. Okay. So the strategy that I'll employ is this. Okay. First, let's think of the strategy that we'll employ. Again, you can solve this problem in many, many ways. This is just one of the many possible ways. The solution that I was thinking of is, look at this. Imagine if I have a string like this. What I'll first do is, I will take individual words in this. I'll take this word, I will reverse it. So reverse individual words. Then I'll take this word and I'll reverse this. Look at this, I'm reversing this word. Then I take this word and I will reverse it. How do I know that this is one word? Again, I'll try to write code in C or C++, right? Using pointer logic, right? So, or using, using pointer operations. So, in C programming language, if I have, if I have a blank space, then I know that it is a separator between two words. The end of the string I know is backslash zero. Okay, this, this, these are very C, C++ specific stuff. So, I will use the fact that you have a blank space between every word. So, now I'll cut each word and I'll, I'll reverse these individual words. I'll reverse these individual words and I'll use a function called reverse to individual to reverse each of these individual words. Now, once I get this string, what I do now is I reverse this whole string now. If I reverse this whole string, what happens? If I reverse this whole string, not word by word. Look at this. First, I reverse the words, then I reverse the whole string. Now, if I reverse the whole string, what do I get? I get algorithms, love, I. That's the output that I want. Again, this is, this is one of the many strategies that you can employ, right? So, this is one of the strategies that I thought I'll employ. And let me walk you through the C, C++ code. Again, if you're planning to write code in Java or Python, that's perfectly okay, right? So let's see the C code because C code is the trickiest because of the pointer logic. So I have a function called reverse words, which does the whole reversal, okay? So this reverse word takes a character pointer, okay? You can, again, this is a pointer to the string. So if you give me this string, it points to, it's a character pointer pointing to the first character here. Okay, that, that's my input. Okay, simple. Now let's go step by step. I'll walk you through this whole program. 
Now I'll say so for first of all, first of all, what I need to do here is I need to find individual words and reverse them. Right? So first I start breaking down the big string that is given to me into words. The, my first word start will be the same as S. Remember, S is a pointer here. Let's not forget that. Okay, Ima imagine if my string was, let's say, love algorithms. Let's assume this is the oh, this is the only string. There is no I. Because reversing I doesn't make any sense. So my S is a pointer to this. My S is a pointer to this. So I make my word start also point to this. Okay, let's call it WS. My word start also points to this. My temp also points to this now. My TMP is also a character pointer pointing to this. Okay, the reason I'm not taking the string I love algorithms because I is a single character word. There is no point in reversing it. It's straightforward. Now, what I do here is this while star temp. Look at this. I'll keep moving my temp till the time I reach the end of the string. Till the time I reach end of string, I'll keep going ahead. That's why I have while, while star temp, which means while the data that is stored at temp is not equals to backslash zero. That's what this means in C programming language. I'll keep incrementing my temp. I'll keep incrementing my temp. Now, what I do now is this. If star temp is not equals to backslash zero. Remember, if it is bad, if it is equals to backslash zero, that means I've reached the end. If I've reached the end, I need to reverse the last word. So I have a function here called the reverse. Remember, I have a function here called the reverse. I'll also talk to you about the reverse function. Reverse function takes two pointers, the starting pointer and the ending pointer. It reverses this whole word. Okay, so the reverse function looks like this. Let's let's understand the reverse function so that understanding the reverse word becomes easier. Okay, the reverse function looks like this. It's a function wherein you give the starting pointer or the beginning pointer and the end pointer. Imagine I have a word like this. This is the beginning pointer. This is the end pointer. I'll just use a temporary storage. This is like simply swapping. I have to swap this and this. Then I have to swap this and this. Then I swap this with itself. Right? I Actually, I can skip this. Okay, I have these pointers beginning and end. That's the logic here. Very simple logic. So I'll say, well, B is less than E. Obviously, this is a pointer. This is a pointer. B is less than E. I'll store whatever is stored in star begin. Star begin means value stored at the begin pointer. Okay. So instead of calling it begin, let me just call it B. Okay. I think uh, in my notes. Okay. So let me just call it B. Okay. Making it simpler. Okay. 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 So we are here. Okay. So I just forgot to wrote and wrote begin here when I'm writing the pseudocode. It's actually B, right? Temp is star B. So in temp, I'm storing my X. In temp, I'm storing X. Now I'm staring. Now I'm saying value stored at B, after which I have a plus plus. Value stored at B is same as value stored at E, which means this N will move here. So this becomes N now. And the B gets incremented. Look at this, star B. And this is a post increment, right? So this B will now point to the second character. Right? Look at this. The B will now point to the second character. Now I'm saying star E equals to temp, which means E will now have X. E will now have X. Now look at this. These two got swapped now and we are doing E minus minus. So which means E will point to this. Again, this is very specific to C programming language. So what did we do? We had X, Y, Z, M, N. We swapped these two and we changed the beginning pointer here. We changed the end pointer here. We made this N. We made this X. And we keep doing it till the time B is less than E. This way, given two pointers, the beginning and the end pointer, I can keep swapping them one after the other. This is how my reverse function works. Now look at this. What am I saying here? If I encounter the end of the string, if I encounter the end of the string, whatever is my word start, my word start will always point to the last word that I have. If, if, I'm, if I'm looking at the end of the string here, look at this. If I'm looking at the end of the string here, if I'm looking at the end of the string, what happens now? My starting, so then the last word which is there needs to be reversed. Look at this. If my temp points to this, if my temp is pointing to this, then my word start will point to this. Then what do I want to do? I want to reverse the last word. So I'll say reverse word start temp minus one. So this is your temp minus one, right? Again, this is pointer arithmetic here. Because this is a character, it will subtract what, so even though it is minus one, it is going to point to the previous character. Right? Very simple logic. So this is handling the case where, where I am processing the last word in, in a string. Okay. Else, if my star temp is blank space, suppose imagine I keep, I keep incrementing this temp. Look at this. I keep incrementing this temp here. My word start points to this. I keep incrementing the temp. My temp will reach here at some point. So the moment I encounter a blank space, that means my first word is done. So what do I do now? I reverse 
from the word start to 10th minus 1. So I reverse this word. I reverse this word. If it is not end of string also, whenever I find a blank space, I have to reverse that word. I reverse that word. Look at this. I reverse that word. And my word start. This, this word is reversed, right? Then my word start has to point to 10 plus 1. Because I have to start looking at the next word now. That's why my word start will become 10 plus 1. And that's it. Okay, this while loop will keep going on. This while loop will keep going on till the time my temp reaches the end of the string. So by the end of this, see, look at this. By the time of this while loop, look at this. By the time this while loop ends, what do we have? We literally have this. We literally have this. That's what happens by the end of this while loop. Now, once, once we have that, what do we want to do? I want to reverse this whole thing. That's why I'm calling reverse. I'm calling the whole thing with reverse with S pointing to the first string. S is always going to point to this. My temp minus 1, because my temp is pointing here at the end of the string. At the end of this, sorry, at the end of this whole while loop, I come to the end of the string. So my temp minus 1 will point to this. So I'm reversing the whole thing. That's it. Look at this. There are, again, the steps here are very, very important. If you're writing your code in C or C++ using pointer operations, you have to manage your pointer operations very, very carefully. And even the reverse part, you have to be careful with the pointer operations. Again, if you are using a different programming language, you will have to use the functions that you have for string manipulations very carefully. But the logic remains the same. You take individual words, reverse these individual words, and then reverse the whole string. That's the concept. The reason I, re I wrote the code in C programming language is because the pointer operations are slightly tricky that you have to be careful about. You have to handle both the cases where the string is ending and where the word is ending. Both these cases have to be handled gracefully. Right? That's it. It's it's not rocket science. It's a very simple thing. I would actually not call this task more as a programming or data. So I will not call this as a data structure or algorithm task. I'll call it more of a programming task. Okay. Questions like this are typically asked to know whether you can write reasonably good code in the programming language of your choice. See, you can pick Java, Python, whatever language you want for most product-based companies. Can you write slightly tricky code in the programming language of your choice? Because the, the, there is no, there is nothing fancy or complex here as far as time complexity is concerned. The time complexity is order of n. So typically, these types of questions are asked in the first phone screen or in the first interview to see whether you can code. Again, writing this code is not trivial. You have to be careful to handle all the cases and to write the pointer operations very, very carefully. Okay, it's not trivial. So, it is testing your knowledge of programming or your ability to program in any programming language of your choice more than your test of algorithms and data structures actually, okay?